Welcome to another edition of Lean Bites, a bite-sized demonstration of a lean topic. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Paul Dean, and today's edition of Lean Bites, we're going to look at a tool called a solution selection matrix. Have you ever encountered a range of potential solutions? You don't know which one to choose, and perhaps those solutions are driven by subjective factors like gut feel or favoritism. A solution selection matrix will allow you to list out those solutions using pre-described criteria to arrive at an objective choice. It allows you to prioritise those series of ideas so you can action the first, the second, the third and so forth. It can be used in a number of different applications all the way from brainstorming to problem solving, even can be used in improvement phase of a domain project. I'm going to demonstrate how this looks today using six simple steps. In demonstrating a solution selection matrix, I'm gonna show you six simple steps, and these steps are best done in collaborating with your team. To help demonstrate the solution selection matrix using a standard format, I've come up with a demonstration example. And here's an example, I've posted the problem statement in the last six months, a drop of 25% revenue by corporate clients booking with other hotels. So the first thing we do in this column, we're going to list down the improvement ideas that have either come from our brainstorming activity or our root cause analysis in order to come up with an objective outcome. So the three examples out of a list of examples, having a dedicated booking department not relying on desk staff, having a personalised greeting upon arrival, and the third idea is all staff pick up the phone before it rings three times. So we list down the improvement ideas. So step number two is where we come up with three to four success criteria. These are what are the indicators that would tell us we're solving the problem and rate these in, of the importance on a scale one to 10. 10 being the best indicator of success. This is a weighting of the level of importance of the success criteria. So for example, in this demonstration example, corporate clients rebooking is one of the best indicators of success. So we've scored it a 10. And down to corporate clients requesting quotations is not as best an indicator, and we're scoring that a six. In step three, we go over to these two columns of cost and time. What is the cost to implement these ideas, where five being the least costly, one being the most expensive. And then time of a scale one to five, where five is the quickest, one is the slowest to implement these ideas. Step number four is where we assess the connection of the improvement idea to the success criteria. In other words, what is the relevance between the improvement idea and the success criteria on a scale one to 10. If there's a very good relevance or a very good connection, it's a 10. If there's very little relevance, it might be a one. So for example, having a dedicated booking department and not relying on desk staff, how does that relate to corporate clients rebooking? That's scored very high, scored a 10. Remember scale one to 10. Having dedicated booking department and not relying on desk staff, how does that relate to getting feedback, very little, and requesting quotations could be even stronger. So step number five is one of the most time consuming parts of the solution selection matrix. This is where we're gonna populate these different cells. So the first thing we do is we've got to take our rating, which is the connection between our improvement idea and the success criteria, multiply it by our success factor. So 10 by 10 plus four by eight plus eight by six. And then we populate these scores here. We do this for all our improvement ideas that are listed down this column. Then we go to our cost. Remember the lowest cost to implement is five and the highest cost to implement is one. This is where we start to populate this. So this first idea is reasonably expensive but the other two ideas are relatively cheap to implement. Then we have a look at the time. Remember time, five is the quickest, one is the most time consuming. So this idea is reasonably time consuming, 
but these two ideas are fairly quick. So once we've got all these numbers populated, then we're going to multiply the impact column by the cost column by the time and end up with a total. This is where we start to see that there's a separation objectively for all the ideas. Now we're starting to see a prioritization. And then step number six is where we start to rank the improvement ideas according to their final score. So for example, this particular ID scored the highest, so it's the highest priority to implement. This particular ID scored the lowest out of the three, so that's the least important in priority. So these are the objective numbers that help us prioritize using the solution selection matrix. So that's the solution selection matrix. I hope that's been helpful. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Lean Bites.